Recovery Sort Of is a podcast where we discuss recovery topics from the perspective of people living in long-term recovery. This podcast does not intend to represent the views of any particular group, organization, or fellowship. The attitudes expressed are solely the opinion of its contributors. Be advised, there may be strong language or topics of an adult nature. Welcome back. It's Recovery Sort Of. I'm Jason, and I have not picked up a thing to use today, thank God. Not an illegal substance, anyway. Well, yeah, I did drink some caffeine. And, and, I, vaped. and I vaped. <laughs> and I might do something else later. Who knows? Yeah, but who knows? just so far. Day's not over yet. Right. <laughs> it's a long day. Uh, my name's Billy. I'm a person in long-term recovery. And we're here with Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm an addict. All hey, right. Uh, and we're going to talk about moving in recovery, uh, like moving, physical location, moving to from one area to another while you are in recovery and have clean time and, and the challenges to that and, and how we've done it pretty poorly, I think, is our general consensus <laughs> and, and maybe what could help uh, and, and maybe stuff that doesn't help so much. I didn't feel like what I learned really helped me a super lot, maybe a little, but uh to start off here, we're going to let Jim, you know, tell us a little bit about why he's qualified to talk about moving in recovery. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. Uh, I'm in recovery. Um, so it took me, I was, uh, I was a chronic relapse. I was in and out of recovery for um, seven years before I uh, finally surrendered and um, decided to give this thing a chance. And uh, so for me, you know, I'm a member of a 12-step fellowship. I, regular meeting attendance is part of what I just do. Um, I have a clean date. It's um, April 5th of 2004. And um, and after seven years from 1997 through 2004 of uh, constant relapse, going back uh, to jails and institutions, finally uh, surrendering and deciding to give recovery a chance. And, you know, I dove into a 12-step fellowship and I got involved and, um, um, you know, I went to meetings uh, daily for probably my first five years in, that I actually was staying clean. And then I cut it back to probably six meetings a week. And um, so I was really connected in the area. I got clean in New Jersey and I was in drug court in New Jersey and I, I finished that program early on. And then I was just clean in New Jersey and I belonged to a fellowship and um and then I, I guess I had around seven years and, uh, where I was working was closing. And, um, I was told that, uh, if I wanted my job, I could have my job, but I needed to relocate to Maryland. And, um, you know, I grew up two miles to the ocean my whole life. Um, my parents lived a block away. Um, I loved where I grew up. I was, a, a I was an hour to Manhattan. I loved the city and I loved being two miles to the ocean my whole life. And, uh, and I didn't want to move to Maryland. <laughs> right? yeah. so that sounds I, nice. I, I wouldn't want to yeah, move to Maryland I, I either. I did not want to move to fucking not Maryland. Not this part anyway. <laughs> and um, and they were, so uh, my wife and I both worked where I worked. Um, I met my, my wife in recovery. And um, I, I had some connections and I'd been clean a while. So I got her a job. And, um, and we both made our living through where I worked. And... Um, so, you know, given the option of both being unemployed or moved to Maryland, you know, we packed it up and we moved down to Maryland. And, um, and you know, we did a lot of trips down here on weekends looking for a house and we would drive down. And uh, it's so funny. We, we passed it. The first time we came down here looking for a house, we, we drove. It was two and a half hours. We drove down here. We looked at like 15 houses. We had booked a uh in some fucking we booked a, a stay in this some no tell motel we Ooh. fucking you know we we checked in and we were there for like an hour we we're like well fuck this let's go home there's some rough ones around here <laughs> right. i don't know how you stay clean right and we were like all right so we got out and uh you know we we made a bunch of those trips down here looking for housing and um we we never found anything and uh we ended up uh renting a place so we we moved down here in march of 2011 to um the Aberdeen area of Maryland and um and you know 
I didn't want to be here. I, I, uh, I definitely came down here with a big chip on my shoulder and, um, I didn't want to be here and, you know, it showed. So, you know, I, I did what I did, what I was, you know, new, right? So I went to a 12 step fellowship meetings and I tried to, um, I was heavily involved in H and I for my entire recovery up in, in New Jersey. And, um, I started to go to meetings and, um, you know, I came down here with a bad attitude. I didn't want to be here. And I just, um, you know, how to win and influence friends when you're new in recovery is like go into a meeting and just insult the entire room. Right. So, <laughs> right. right. So, you know, I continue, I did that repeatedly and, um, you know, I wasn't really making a lot of friends and I was really okay with that. I had a really small network of people in, in my life up in, in Jersey where I was and, I've always been, you know, a handful of people, core people that were in my life and they were still in my life. And so, you know, when I got down here and I was, and you know, everything was different, right? They didn't celebrate the same way that I did. And, uh, there was just a lot of differences and I, and I continued to do, you know, everything that I told was told don't do. Right. So, you know, I, I was comparing myself out, um, and I, and I picked a home group and I showed up and, um, you know, there was some personal personality conflicts between myself, you know, coming from New Jersey, I'm pretty opinionated and I'm pretty much have a Jersey attitude, I guess I've been told where, and you know, I, I'm kind of myself, right? So I'm, I'm okay with my, I've done a lot of work, you know, I, I belong to a 12 step fellowship. I believe that, you know, the only way to, to, uh, stay in this process was to work some steps. And, um, you know, having been through the steps a number of times, it, even when I got down here, I'd been through them at least twice when I moved down here with seven. Wow. And you're uh, beating most people here. That's hell for sure. yeah. <laughs> well, so, you know, so that was different, right? So I, I wasn't part of the step a year club, which was mm, yeah. what I heard a lot of down here. You know, it's like, it's okay. So where I came from, that was like the only way to change was to do some step work. Um, the same addict will use again. And I had continued to prove that over and over again. And, uh, so, you know, the message, what I heard when I went to the meetings were from the fellowship I grew up in was, um, I had a lot of time clean and now I don't. Right. And so that message doesn't work for me. Right. But, and that wasn't the only message there. That was just what I heard. Right. So, right. um, it was because, you know, the, you know, so, and, and that's not the reality, right. There's a lot of people down here with long-term recovery and they're, um, you know, I've, and, and, you know, they're, they're doing what works for them. And, you know, so like when I got down here and I had an attitude, <laughs> there was this core group of people, you know, kind of like when I was a constant relapser up in New Jersey, there was this core group of people that always welcomed me back. And there was this, you know, regardless of whether, when I was just coming back in and, you know, even every time I came back, I was carrying a message that it still sucked out there. And, um, you know, so then I was playing around with, um, Maybe it wasn't the right fellowship for me down here. And then I tried changing fellowships and, you know, that didn't work for me either. So, but even when I was doing that and I was doing both fellowships and, um, you know, that didn't work for me. And, um, so I just kept coming, right. I just kept coming. And there was this core group of people, um, that were probably out of my very first meetings down here that welcomed us and, um, welcomed my wife and I, and, uh, they made the difference, right. So. Mm -hmm. They made the difference for me. And I think we moved down here in March and our first, um, holiday Christmas and new year down here, we went to, we were invited to, um, this individual, there a couple in recovery, you know, they go to two different fellowships, long-term recovery in the area. And we were invited to their house for new year's and, you know, they were the beginning of our network down here. And, um, and my wife is, she makes friends a lot easier than I do. Right. So. So she's just loving and caring and all the opposite things that I'm not. Right? <laughs> That's my wife too. It sucks. Right. I got a funny story about that. But and, you know, so she, so we, she, you know, she eventually found a sponsor down here. And, um, so, you know, I, I continued to, I did get a home group and, um, and slowly, right. So I, I be believe I belong in the fellowship I, I, uh, I'm in, um, and I'm back to where the fellowship that I grew up in and, um, and you know, nothing's changed down here. Right. It's, it's my attitude has changed. Right. 
I I need the fellowship and the program in order for me to stay clean. It doesn't need me, right? I've seen over my years in recovery, I've seen, you know, so many guys just go out and die. And uh, that's what's waiting for me, right? Jails, institutions, and death. If I pick up, um, that's what's waiting for me. And um, it took me a really long time to get a solid first step in my life. It took me seven years in and out. And um, I haven't forgotten that. And uh you know, so I know that um, you guys were talking when we when I pulled up, you were talking about it outside, and it was like, I didn't get high today, right? So I'm having a successful day no matter what else, right? So mm -hmm. that's the basis of my recovery. And, um, you know, so my wife and I, we're going to be moving again, right? So now we're, um, we just bought a house down in South Carolina, mm -hmm. and um, we just got back on uh, a couple of days ago. We've been down there for a week. And, you know, we we started going to meetings already down there. And, uh, you know, so for the last year and a half, I've done almost entirely uh, meetings online. And um, I'm doing probably more. I'm doing four to five meetings a week still. And um, I've almost convinced myself I don't need to go to in-person meetings. Ooh. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Which I know that that's fucked up. So I, it? For, well, I don't know. Right. So. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. So I haven't been in a year and a half and um we we did go to one down there and we didn't go in, right? So and uh it was like, well, do we do we really feel like going in? And so I don't know, I'll be facing that again because I, I, I we're not moving down. We got a couple of years before I retire. So I'm I, I hope that when uh when we actually do move down there I don't do all the same things I did up here when I moved to here. Mm. I try to learn from my mistakes. I, um, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, I belong in the fellowship that I'm in. I, I'm not confused about that. I wasn't confused to begin with, but um, it just takes some work for me to, and some acceptance and, uh, and not everybody recovers in the same way or at the same time or, and that, um, you know, by continuing to work on myself, I've come to terms with the area I live in. Um, I, I live in a beautiful part of Maryland. I, I, I wouldn't say I love being here because I don't. <laughs> right? no, I'm not that far. Right? I, I'm still, I'm still an ocean guy. I'm still a beach guy, and um, you know, that's where we're eventually going to end up is back at the beach. But um, so I don't know. I, I don't know if that was enough to. Get oh, the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, so for me, right, so I need to keep an open mind. Um, I need to show up on a regular basis. I need to, you know, practice the seventh step, right, for me is, um, you know, humbly ask the, the God of my understanding for some help when I'm encountered with uh, just differences, you know, some patience. I need to ask for some patience and tolerance, and uh, and I need all you guys, right? Like, mm -hmm. I can't stay clean by myself, right? I've proven that over and over again. Um, so I know that um, a 12-step fellowship is the way for me. I've, I, it never takes me long to use. Um, I'm never that guy that's like, oh, I haven't been to a meeting in three weeks because I'll probably pick up in three weeks, right? Because <laughs> it's always... For me, that thought is very always near in my head that wouldn't it be better if I just did one of these or whatever these is. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm not willing to risk it. I'm not willing to go back to sheer fucking misery that my, was my life in active addiction. So, so in light of it taking, uh, uh, Jim's version of it taking seven years to work his first step the first time and then the seven years to go through the steps twice, I feel a little better at least. That's like 14 <laughs> years. I'm like, okay, that's realistic. 14 years for two times through. I'll buy that. Uh, I don't feel so bad about myself anymore. Um, you know, it's challenging to move in recovery, right? I, so I got clean in uh, an area of Baltimore called Hamden. And that's where my foundation was. That's where I knew people. I, it took me a very long time. In fact, I would, stay, I'm, I would say I'm still in the process of learning to be able to use the phone without having anxiety attacks, right? So like, I need to see people in person and show up where they're at or I don't talk to them a lot of times. Um, so uh, I like that you had like the people in Jersey to still kind of lean on when you weren't feeling it down here. But I've never felt when I moved that I had that that comfort zone. I'm like, if I can't, I got to drive to them. Yeah. And so I had moved to, to another area called Parkville and there were meetings like, I don't know, 15 minutes away, but where I lived in Hamden, the meetings were like three minutes walking. Right. <laughs> so 
it was a little different. I'm like, 15 minutes seems so far for a meeting. I'll just <laughs> skip, right? And then I was like, well, I don't even like these people over here. I'll just keep driving back to Hamden, right? But that's like a... You get traffic. Meetings are right after rush hour. You're talking 35, 40 minutes. It was a pain in the ass. I went a month or two without hitting a meeting. I was like, fuck it. Like, I just won't. Moved to Dundalk. Decided, I, I, you know, I'll just hit Dundalk meeting. That shit didn't work because... I think I had four years clean and the great I am couldn't, it's, it's hard to be a newcomer even when you're trying to be humble, right? If you're not humble, because I guess I was trying to be and I just wasn't, <laughs> right? So I'm like in meetings and, and, and I had the nice responses for when people tried to help me stay clean. And I'm like, man, you got, I got more time than you motherfucker, right? Like, but I had the nice responses like, oh, I appreciate that. That's so helpful. But I didn't feel connected and it was hard to get connected to people. And I ended up, joining a home group that had just started out of people who weren't tied into the area. So it was like a home group of people who really weren't plugged in in the area. And I was like, oh, yeah, this feels more comfortable. <laughs> well, of course it feels more comfortable. It's a bunch of people who are trying to avoid getting plugged in, right? Uh, but I, I, I got in there. I, I kind of sort of got a little plugged in with a few people. But even those people weren't plugged in in the area. So it was kind of useless, honestly. And I hit that home group and my old Hamden home group for like a year and a half, two years straight. I kept them both. And it was a fucking pain in the ass. It was 45 minutes to drive to Hamden in rush hour from Dundalk. It was, it was, and it finally got to the point where I had to let Hamden go, right? That old area. But I still, it took me five, six years to feel comfortable in Dundalk. Hmm. And so I tried to not do that moving to Cecil County. I said, I'm just going to do all the opposite things. I'm going to run into meetings and wave my hand and say I'm new and get plugged in. And I encountered all the same stuff you talked about. I encountered that they do shit different. They say shit different. They have different little chants at the beginning and ends of the meetings for whatever reason. And they're all the wrong ones up here, obviously. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the meetings here are so different. The fellowship, the culture of this 12 step program is so different here where I come from. You get clean meetings are in walking distance. If not, they're close enough. You can get rides. You're hitting seven every week, right? Or six or something, right? You're hitting meetings and, and not through your whole life, but in the beginning. And then you're, you know, still hitting three when you're after that and you're established up here. Everybody I ran into was either they were in recovery houses and then none of the old timers went to the recovery house meetings. And then if you went on the outskirts to the old timer meetings, they, it felt like they weren't really serious about recovery. And they basically showed up for an hour once a week. And that's the only thought they gave to their recovery. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck world is this? This does not feel like recovery for me. And where do I fit in it? Hmm. Do I show up for an hour a week? And like, that's the only thing I do for my recovery. That doesn't feel right. And, and so I did get more plugged in, but where I got plugged in was with the recovery house meetings, which is a bunch of people who either ain't around no more because they're recovery house meetings and they moved or used or whatever. And I couldn't get plugged in with the older established members, I guess. And I still haven't. I mean, I've been here three years. I don't know where the hell the older established members are. <laughs> like, I really don't. Like, I, I know a couple now at my home group, but. And COVID made that worse. COVID that made that super help. worse. Yeah, yeah that was a year and a half in the middle. It was bad before. Of that. It's right. worse now. <laughs> right. right, right. And and now I'm in a place where you're talking about, like, uh, do I even need a meeting? I don't know. Like, like you were more, do I need in-person meetings? But right. I'm kind of like, do I need a meeting? Like, I, I, I definitely need a meeting. <laughs> well, let's not get that twisted. So <laughs> I, it's not that I don't think I need a program. I definitely think I need a program and people to stay accountable to, but I feel like I do that outside of any meeting attendance I've been doing. And so that's, and look, I just signed up for another year long commitment in my program. So it's not like I'm going anywhere, but I question it a lot. I'm like, do I, what am I getting here? What am I doing? Like, yeah. and I had an interesting experience early in recovery. So I had six, seven months clean and my wife and I took six weeks. We weren't married at the time, but we took six weeks and drove around the country, went all over the place. And we went to meetings in all these different areas. And so with just a few months clean, it was fascinating to go to these different areas and see the broad spectrum of how they did different stuff. You'd see anniversaries that were completely different than anything they do. The whole meeting format would be completely different. The way that they did sponsorship would be, I mean, just everything was completely different. 
And that was so eye opening to be like, holy shit, what I've been doing in, you know, here in Cecil County the last six months isn't like the only way that you're supposed to do this. Like mm. there is some, uh, well, it's the autonomy is really right. what it is, but different areas do stuff different. And we would go to areas where meeting attendance was so limited or it was in such rural areas that the same people would do the AA meetings and the NA meetings on different nights of the week. And we talked to them, they'd go, oh yeah, it'll just be us back here on Tuesday nights with the AA literature, but there's only <laughs> five of us. And we just try to keep a meeting under the different titles so that anybody looking, if somebody's got a preference for one or the other, they'll find us. But we're really just the same five people that are meeting here all the time. And just to see shit like that was like, holy shit, like that's crazy, you know? That's the most spiritual but, thing I would judge the fuck out of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that helped me to see. So then a few years later, I had who turned out to be one of my best friends and my sponsor for a long time. A guy moved down here from Philly, joined my home group. He had more clean time than anybody else. Told us how the fuck we were doing everything wrong. We were reading the wrong readings. He threw out some readings. We changed all this stuff about the meeting. And since he was the guy with all the time and I'm the one going, wait a minute, you can't fucking come in here and do that. I don't care how much time you have. I've been at this meeting for like at that time, I think I'd been there seven or eight years. It had been my home group. I'm like, you can't just come in and change all this shit. But everybody wanted to listen to him. And I hated him. Him and I didn't get along at all. And of course, later he became my sponsor and one of my best friends. But it was fascinating to see, like, he was so stuck. And, so, and he had, I guess, the Philly equivalent of the Jersey accent, which is confrontational and loud. And I'm going to be the louder, you know, voice in the room, and then I'll get what I want. And uh, I don't know. It was it was been interesting to see, I guess, the changes in this area. <laughs> It's taken me three years just to get over the fact that they say the we version of the serenity prayer up here. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. Where I came from, they said the we version didn't exist. Hmm. It's not written anywhere. It's not real. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter? I, at this point, I'm yeah, like, right. why do I care? But it, it was a big deal. Yeah, people say all kinds of shit that yeah, doesn't yeah. exist. But yeah, it's weird. That... There's like four or five different things people holler out in the just for today reading. I'm like, what in the fuck? <laughs> weird i have yeah. a program and things like, feel oh. wrong yeah it feels so weird and, and yeah i mean so i have traveled at this point in time i've seen some different areas and they do things different and maybe you speak for your anniversary maybe you get somebody to speak for your anniversary yeah. maybe they don't do anniversaries but once a month everybody that got one gets five minutes to talk or something like yeah seen that it's right. weird so, everywhere so where i came from the clean time whatever meeting celebrated clean time it was whether you were celebrating 30 days or 30 years, everybody had the same amount of clean time. They asked you your name and how you did that. So when, when I moved down here, like that was the biggest thing for me. Like to me, it was this big ego trip <laughs> and a down what, so I, I still struggle with it. Right. So, you know, when I joined the home group, so to me, it was just this big ego trip about your clean time and you're telling your story. And I, I don't know. I've been to, um, you know, I've, we all got a story and, and experience strength and hope meetings. I, I don't go to a lot of them because I'd rather go to a topic or a step meeting. Cause that's how I continue to change is how you're applying this stuff in your life. But hmm. when they were, when I moved down here and all the meetings were like, Oh, well, where are you celebrating? It was just this big, to me. It was like, I'm like, that's that just sounds fucking horrible. <laughs> right? Right. That just sounds fucking horrible. They're, I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Right. So, so, you know, for me, that's, it's, and it's still a struggle. Right. So, and then, you know, and you were talking about, so, you know, my wife and I, when we travel, we go to meetings all over the country and, and, and I have a completely different attitude because I don't live there. Right. Mm, so, right. and I, and I, I know I'm there, just there visiting, and I can I can adapt anywhere, right? Tolerate it, I, right? I can, I can be like, oh, that was interesting, but when <laughs> when I have to live it, and it was like thrown in my face, this is the way we do it, and I'm just like, well, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> so you know, and I used to verbalize it when I first got down here. You know, I, I'm still not a fan of how they celebrate clean time here, but um, you know, I finally found a home group where. Whenever it was my clean date, I shared on whatever step it was. So, you know, it's because that's what they did. So, you know, and when I joined that home group, every single person, whether they were had a year or 20 years, they would still tell their story every fucking year. And I'd be like, 
I don't fucking get it. So, you know, mm. but, and it was a step meeting, right? So then I started sharing every time it was my clean date on whatever step we were supposed to be on. That's what I did. And they were like, oh, that's pretty interesting, right? So then people started doing that. So, I mean, there's still ways, not that my way was right or theirs was wrong. It's just, you know, if it's a step meeting and my home was a step meeting, kind of want to hear about the steps and it's okay if you didn't fucking work it. Like, but so I don't know. It's just um, those kind of things were, I struggled with, right? Did you say you don't like speaker meeting? Um, experience, strength, and hope ones. I'd rather hear somebody talking about their experience on a step than just mm. telling me their story. I, I got clean when, you know, I, I, a story is part of everybody's got one, right? So for me, having been here 17 years and seven years in and out, I don't get a lot out of that myself, right? right. Um, so I'd much rather hear about somebody that's telling me how they worked a four step or worked a seven step in their life or any of the steps in their life. Because to me, the program is how I stay clean and, and how I continue to change, practice this, these principles in all my affairs. So to me, that's just my mm -hmm. opinion on what I would rather hear at a meeting. So I'm just finding it interesting because I, I come from an area that is almost exclusively completely making this number up, probably like 95% speaker meeting. Some topics thrown in there, right? right? But even in the topic meetings, a lot of times people just kind of share their story anyway. <laughs> right. And coming up here, where at least on this side of the bridge, you're in Hartford County, right? Yes. Yeah. So on this side of the bridge, there's virtually zero speaker meeting. So sitting in all these meetings that are just round robins was so weird for me. I'm like, I'm used to the majority of the meeting being somebody telling their story and you try to, you know, you try to go to meetings that get good speakers, so to speak, that are <laughs> keep your attention. <laughs> so to sit here for all these like five minute shares of all the, most of the time in a meeting down near Baltimore, the people who talk after the speaker, it's like, what the fuck were you even talking about? Are you high? Like, I don't even understand see, where you're at. What's hilarious. So being in this area the whole time, for one, it's changed, at least again, this side of the bridge, I can't speak as much for the Harford County side, but it's changed dramatically over the years from we used to have more step meetings. There used to be past the basket meetings. There used to be tradition meetings. And now it does seem like most all that's gone. And now it's just, almost all round robin meetings we that's basically almost all we have but i personally like that the best you know for me it's like i want to hear about all right what struggles are you going through in your life today and how are you using recovery to deal with that like what you know so what kind of crazy shit happened at your work and now you're trying to apply these principles to your life to get through that that's more helpful to me than hearing same like where you came from and what crazy shit you did and what recovery house you were at like every goddamn meeting up here reads it just for today for that day every last one of them do they do that in hartford county do they read that at every meeting uh do they read it yes it's not not, not the, the one at the end the the actual yeah, like the, 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 the one page yeah. right they read that at every goddamn so one meeting. of the right. things i can say too and this is again from from being here early on and i think if you were in bigger areas you didn't have that in the Beginning when I got clean, so I've been here, I first started coming to meetings, let's see, I was 17, so that would have been in the early 90s, 91, 92, and then I got clean in 2000, there was six, eight people at a meeting, maybe 10 was a big meeting, you know, and you just didn't have a lot of people, so when people were celebrating years like five or eight or 10, like that was a big fucking deal like you just didn't have people that had 10 15 20 years that came to meetings on a regular basis mm. and we're out in the middle of nowhere like a lot of people don't want to drive out here to speak at speaker meetings so yeah. you can only ask the same circuit of six or eight people right. that are actually good entertaining speakers to speak before you get fucking wore out of that shit <laughs> no I, I get the limitations and why yeah. i just I don't know. I mean, my home group reads the uh, the living clean, which well, is I think we've nice. outgrown that some too. And and I would say the area hasn't changed for like we've joked about at my home group. Now we're like, let's stop celebrating anniversaries, except for like the important ones. Like you get a one year, then you get five, ten, then twenty, 
And then all the in between ones don't count. Like you don't get to celebrate. <laughs> those that sounds fucking yeah. miserable. I gotta tell you, that sounds fucking. <laughs> such as I hate the fucking way they do clean time. I think you know. Every, I yeah. think all those really count. Yeah, and that's so we were like, let's do that. And then we haven't done that, but that's kind of how we've uh, like seventeen. Who gives a fuck about seventeen? Like it's twenties. Cool. I just right. celebrated seventeen. Right, right. Right. Well, right. That's you know. It matters. But that's. You know, who knows? It's And for a long time, I thought that, too. I'm like, why the fuck did they give us a cake for not shooting heroin? Like, who the fuck, like, as a normal person, you're not supposed to shoot heroin. Like, why the fuck you get a cake for that? <laughs> I mean, I should come up with excuses to get cake every goddamn day. I don't, whatever. <laughs> so I, I think, I, I don't want to get too far away from the, the topic. We've talked a lot about the differences in the areas and how hard that adjustment can be. Because I think, uh, I will say everybody hates change. Billy will say, you know, as addicts, we hate it more than others. I, I don't know if we do or not, but change is difficult, right? And, and especially a change to, so this, I, I don't know, we don't hold the church in as high regard as we used to, but for people who went to church in the previous generation before me, I guess, like if they would have just changed their church ceremony, or if those people would have tried to go from being Catholic to going to a Baptist ceremony, like that's really, really different, right? And and if church was something you held dear to your heart and sacred, that fucks you up. And I think twelve step meetings are kind of like that for us, right? They're they're very sacred to us. They gave us life at one point. And so we hold on to that format and that the way they do it and the faces we see and and to change areas is so abrasive and abrupt and it feels so wrong and i and i totally understand why you would feel like fuck all these people down here right they're all assholes and doing it wrong and ego filled and and i think one of the things to keep in mind at least for me is that i can view anybody else as ego filled or or, or you know judge them in a in a critical way i remember learning that people in southern maryland get other people to share their anniversary for them and coming from an area where we shared our own anniversaries i was like that's egotistical as shit <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't make a whole lot of sense right <laughs> you would think the other way but i was like they're too important to share that's crazy <laughs> like so i i can make anybody feel egotistical or, or look you know what i mean i can judge that no matter what they're doing and, and I guess it's just one of those things we're going to have to accept when we move in recovery is that things are going to be different and we are going to feel like the outsider and the newcomer all over again, which is super uncomfortable. And we, we are going to have to sit in that and walk through it to get to the other side of it. Like, that's what I learned for me, at least. It's not going to get better taking a night of the week and going to my old area. Like, it's not going to get better by not going to meetings. It's not going to get better by starting my own home group with a coffee pot that's not plugged in, right? Maybe it will, but not really. So it's it's just not going to get better avoiding, right? I got to walk through it. And maybe for me, I needed to be more honest about it. Like, I tried to play that humble role, like, oh, I have four years. I'm so zen. And, and thank you for offering to help me stay clean. But maybe I need to own up and be like, Dude, that kind of fucking pisses me off because I've already been clean for a while. Like, no, no offense to you. I appreciate it. But like, I'm not new. This episode has been brought to you in part by Voices of Hope, Inc., a nonprofit recovery organization made up of people in recovery, family members, and allies. Together, members strive to protect the dignity of those that use drugs and those in recovery by advocating for treatment, harm reduction and support resources, and mentoring. Please visit us at www.voicesofhopemaryland.org and consider donating to our calls. Yeah, and so we did some traveling a few years back, and... Before that, I had sponsored a guy up here, and he moved to Florida, and never having that experience, I gave him all the fucking best advice he could have ever had, because, you know, I knew what I was talking about, even though I didn't have that experience, you know? Oh, you need to go down there, you need to just hit a bunch of meetings, you need to do this and that, pick a home group, 
all this shit. And he struggled, and he, he would call me still, and he'd be like, man, I go to these meetings, and they're all fucked up, and, you know, just I don't like it, and, and all his struggles. And I, you know, talked him right out of his feelings, you mm-hmm. know, or tried to talk him out of his feelings, and you just got to stick with it. And he did, and and eventually, you know, did okay down there. He so found you were right. What do you want? What's that? <laughs> so you were right. Well, what he started doing for himself was he started traveling out of the immediate area that he was in and going to, I guess, the next area over, huh. which was a little more of a drive, but he seemed to like the meetings there better. So he found what worked for him. But when we traveled, then we went out on the road and I could come up with every excuse why not to do all those things. Like we were traveling uh, around, we would only be in a certain area for a couple of months. So we'd be there for three or four months. Then we would leave and go to another area. And the plan was only ever to be there for a few months. So I would go. When we first started, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll hit some meetings. It'll be great. You know, went to a couple meetings, went, oh, this is awkward as shit. Like, I don't know who the people are with recovery and who aren't and who are the people that are just talking a bunch of shit, you know, and and I don't want to feel like a new person. And my anxiety was through the roof. So I would go to the meeting and soon it was over. Couldn't wait to get the fuck out of there. I mean, as soon as it was over, I wasn't hanging out to talk to nobody. I would show up five minutes early, stand outside and like, nobody's talking to me. Bunch of fucking assholes. You know what I mean? Like, what are they? Don't they know? You know, I'm new. Don't they recognize? And just, you know, all the shit that I'm sure he felt when he moved down there to Florida that I tried to talk him out of. I felt and I didn't embrace it at all. I just went, ah, uh, I'll be out of this area in a couple months. Fuck that. And, you know, drifted up. Meanwhile, my wife, she goes, shows up at meetings. I think the second meeting she went to, she just joined it, made it her home group. And before we would leave an area, she'd be fucking sponsoring people and have these relationships and doing great. And I'm like, oh, the meetings here suck. And these people are terrible. <laughs> And then we would go to the next area, and I would have the same experience. You know what I mean? Oh, the meetings suck. The people suck. Everybody's terrible. I don't like this. And she'd be fucking making friends and sponsoring people. (laughs) So it sounds like uh, you and I are like two two peas in a pod because (laughs) my wife, same thing happens with my wife when we go to a new area. So she's, uh, so what does that, what does that tell me? I I don't know. I I need to be more open minded and, uh, than I am. Right. So, and uh, and I'm not so I, I can say yeah I'm gonna do it different or I'm gonna uh, you know I I learned through pain right so I found that um I found it painful right when I when I moved and I found it painful to go to meetings and feel alienated into in a fellowship that I loved and that changed my life and you know and I I I have the same sponsor today that I did when I moved 11 years ago he's been my sponsor for probably 15 years and um. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I talked to him on a regular basis. And, uh, and so I, I didn't go through that. Like my wife changed sponsors when we moved and I'm um, down here. And, uh, so I don't know. I, I haven't that. So a lot of my network is still the same from back in Jersey. So I, I fall back onto that a lot. Right. So like I can reach out to, um, uh, those guys that were there when I first got clean at any point I go to, um, so, you know, this is how fucked up I am, right? So I just, it was a guy from down here, right? I do have, I sponsor a couple guys down here and I and I have people, friends down here and um, in recovery and I called him, it was his birthday and he didn't fucking call him, like he didn't even acknowledge. And I'm like, oh, fuck him. See, that's why I don't fucking get around. And I'm just like, it's, it means nothing, right? And it's like, you know, and it's just, but that's how my mind works, right? So, you know, I was right all along, you know? Right. And I'm not, right? I'm I'm fucking wrong most of the time. So, um, you know, who knows what's going on in that guy's life, why he didn't call me back. And uh and it's not that big a deal. It really just isn't. So I, I learned from pain, right? So I found it painful to go outside the meetings and stand there. So I I suffered definitely some kind of um social anxiety, right? So I mean, you know, that's why I drank, right? Or did drugs because if I you, nobody was talking. I can talk to anybody when I'm fucking loaded, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, when um when I'm feeling that kind of stuff, right? So, you know, I just fucking leave, right? I just run, and uh, so um, moving in recovery, it te- it teaches me that I need to just stick around, as awkward as it is, and talk, to people and um, uh, because it is awkward. I find it fucking really uncomfortable, and um, 
And yeah. yet you agreed to come on here and talk to us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. That's I'm not awesome. going to see you guys again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave here like to South Carolina. <laughs> what do I care? Fuck out of Maryland. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It took a lot of work, and it takes a lot of work for, in order for me to stay here and to uh, continue to have the willingness to do walk through uncomfortable shit. And I wonder how much of that is like a, and I don't know, maybe this is an easy cop out for me. But is that like more of a male thing? Like it's harder as a male to have like intimate, vulnerable relationships. Like I know going into these new meetings where I don't know nobody. One of my first fucking walk in the room things is I got to like assess the room and measure out like all the people in the room to figure out where I fit in that pecking order. And I know that's an old bad way of looking at things, but that's just a habit of mine, you know, is to come in and assess the room and see where I fit in that hierarchy of stuff. And like with, you know, say my wife, like you don't just walk in the room with your ego and know you're at the top. <laughs> right. Just know <laughs> I'm at the top. No. And with my wife, like she would immediately like, I, and I've seen her do it. She would have no problem coming in. Yeah. We just moved to the area. You know, we've been clean a while. We did it. And she would just put all that shit right out. We're trying to get connected. I'm like, you can't, I couldn't even think of doing that. Like, I got to come in and try to find some subtle yet intelligent way to slip in my clean time without sounding too much like <laughs> an egomaniac, you know? Like, no, I'm not a new guy. I mean, I'm not that fucking guy, you know? And, and just all that weird. I've been and I here know it's a few all cups weird, insane shit that I got going on in my head, you know? It's, it's so weird. But I wonder if that's like a male thing more than a women thing. Like, it took, and what I mean is it took, me a long time to establish relationships where I felt like I could be myself and be intimate and vulnerable with certain guys or around certain people and to have that not available anymore you know or to have to reestablish all that is is tough yeah yeah I mean uh, that's a, a microcosm of of the way we you know socialize our young men in our society we're socialized to be self-sufficient and all hard and on our own and we don't share anything like the thing that breeds connection is vulnerability right emotional vulnerability is when we truly connect with other people when i tell you something and give you the chance to possibly hurt me i'm risking something and then that brings us together like if i just talk about the weather and sports teams and stuff like that there's no risk so there's no real connection being fostered there um so yeah i mean I, I would imagine it would definitely be different for men but i i that's not i don't say that as a oh it's different for men it's harder right i say that as like man we need to like really go to therapy and practice some other things in our life yeah. so that we can also do this thing where we open up and talk to people for sure and for myself what ended up happening in that time that we traveled is my desire or willingness to want to go to meetings just got less and less and less. And I went through weeks and months where I didn't go to meetings and I never considered myself like out of the fellowship. Like I always knew quote unquote, knew that I needed it and knew that it was something that I couldn't use or I would destroy my life, but I didn't fucking go to meetings or do anything. Which is for hilarious years. to me yeah. for years. I mean, if time. you're not going to meetings and not working steps, like why do you consider yourself a member? <laughs> Because I, I didn't want to not, what I wanted was to be back here where I uh, felt comfortable and safe and to have the meetings and the people and everything that I was used to be where I was. God, if it was that, if that was there, I would have kept going, but it wasn't. So I didn't want to go rebuild all that stuff. So the, there's no one size fits all. I get that, right? There's never going to be a do this, this, and this when you move and you'll automatically fit in and in this amount of time, it'll, you'll be a part of that area. But is there some general good practices that we can come up with that would probably help people moving to a new area? Like just in, I mean, I think there's probably quite a few if we were going to make a list. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you, for me, I would wholeheartedly suggest going and just whatever meeting you're going to. Like I see people that are new doing it and I see people that are changing areas do it. I see people on um, they're just saying that, yeah, I'm, I'm new to this meeting. I'm new to the area and I'm trying to get connected. And, and I think, wow, 
I wish I did that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Why couldn't I just Why do that? Right. It seems so fucking right. easy. And, like. you know, and uh, like, you know, and I see them and then I see it like, you know, I've seen them, people that come to this area doing that. And I'm like, that, that fucking amazes me. I got to, I'm like, fuck. I judge the shit out of them people. <laughs> I'm like, you couldn't just say you're new. You got to say you're new to this meeting so that we all knew you'd been here before, you unhumble fuck. <laughs> oh, no, see, I'm the other one. But... So for myself now having my experience, and I think that's kind of how we really met is like I try to recognize when people do that because I understand that uncomfortable feeling of trying to go somewhere and get reconnected. So if people do that, I try to go out of my way. I mean, I try to do that with all new people or people that I don't see at my home group. But I mean, specifically, if I see people at a meeting, even that's not my home group, and they say I'm not from this area or I'm new to the area or we just moved up here, like I try to go out of my way to talk to them. So before we get any further in our list of suggestions, is our list of suggestions going to be the exact same list of suggestions we'd tell a new 12-step member? Are they the exact same? Or are there some differences for people that move to a new area that have already been here for a while? Or do we just say, pray, go to meetings and don't pick up? Get involved, get a sponsor, get a service commitment. <laughs> so I, I think that there are some differences. I mean, I'm not, you know, so in the area I got clean in, they read eight suggestions at every single meeting, right? So, you know, avoid all people, places, and the things you use with her at. Like, use the phone, phone, get a home group. You know, so if I'm moving to a new area, I don't have old people, places, and things. So I, I think that that's different. But, mm. so, but you know, old places and the old – so I can go – I copped in many fucking places I'd never been to before. So I can find that old place in, in a new – Right, so right. Very quickly. I was very adaptive copping in places i've never been before so so i guess that, that i guess it's the, kind of the same but it, it's a little bit different for me mm. in that that one suggestion but i think the rest of them are uh they they finally added you know get a service commitment to now in jersey where i where i got clean that they have nine suggestions and you know get a service commitment so h and i was always a very big part of um uh, of my recovery and uh i joined h and i down here and it just it was so this is gonna be so, <laughs> so judgmental i'm with it i love it already <laughs> so it's it, it was so different and like you know to me an h and i commitment was you know there was uh, a, a panel like four or five people on the panel they showed up every single week we went into the same facility every week and the same people showed up every week and anybody could join that panel Hmm. But and and you know the, those people in that facility saw the same people coming in every week, and you just started building a, you know some rapport with those people, right? So huh. I went into the jail up in Jersey for four years, the same jail that I was in. Lots it took me three years to get cleared, and then I continued to go to that jail. But those guys, seeing the same guys come in every single week, they started opening up, right? So down here it was. Well, no, you're going there this week, and then you don't show up for another month. And to yeah. me, that well, that's not really a commitment. That's like mm -hmm. it's a want the month thing where, and then it's just a then it's just a presentation of what a narcotics anonymous meeting would have been. And so for me, that was um, it, it was missing something, right? So huh. so for me, so so going into a facility once a month here. So I joined H and I down here and. And I like, well, this doesn't really fucking work for me. I come in once right. a month. These people don't, they don't trust me. They don't know me. They've seen me. Because whoever I saw a month ago isn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so, so from that perspective, I would certainly suggest, you know, getting a commitment, whether it's on a group level or an H&I or PI commitment in a new area. I mean, regardless, that didn't pan out for me. Um, it certainly was helped me meet a whole cast of characters that were trying to do the same thing as me in the new area. So uh, from that perspective, it was helpful. All right. So interestingly enough, we're doing an episode about moving in recovery and, uh, and we, just, we just had to move. We got kicked out of our last location. Uh, we don't know what the hell Jim just said. I know he ended on something. It was probably like the greatest thing right, we've ever the heard. Best part of the whole podcast. Solve my whole recovery. 
<laughs> right, Billy walked off. I walked the out of the thing. room. So, um, <clears throat> but we did want to finish up with just like, what are these good practices, right? I know that's the direction we were going. Hitting meetings is helpful. Uh, one of the things when I was talking about that I did of going to my old area, right? One night a week to hit my old home group. And I, I thought at the time, I'm like, this is really useful. I can, I can hit my old home group for a while. I can hit a new home group at the same time. I'll get plugged in both places and you know I'll have what I need. I almost wonder if it wasn't counterproductive though. I wonder if I would have taken that extra night of meetings because at that time I had a family, I had kids. I couldn't hit seven meetings a week. I was limited to three-ish or something. Like I might have been better served getting plugged into the new area by not going to my old area and by just being all in. And I kind of wondered that when you said how you had that p the people in Jersey, right? That network to lean on. I wonder if that's almost a hindrance. Definitely. To... So, so I, I would agree. So, I mean, if Jersey wasn't two hours away and, um, so I, I think you're going to definitely run into a situation where you're not going to be able to go back to that area. Right. So two hours, it certainly wasn't manageable to go back to a home group in Jersey. So hmm. I wasn't right. So, right. Um, COVID has changed that a little bit. So now I, my, I still had guys that were in my network from Jersey. So now there's an online meeting that we all go to. It's a men meeting on Wednesday night. Um, so we, so I'm, I'm still plugged in with those guys, but I would definitely see how it would have been counterproductive if I was running back to, up to Jersey to, to go without spending that extra night of meetings to trying to get plugged in. For me, that would be something I would not repeat again, right? Even if I moved a half hour away, I would, um, even that's too far. Like I've seen people move a half hour from where they were and do that half hour commute because, oh, it's only a half hour, right? So, right. Um, so I, I, I would think that that would be, would be a hindrance in trying to connect in a new area for me. I'm thinking, and I know this is awful, and I'm not saying it's the wrong thing to hold on to those relationships that you had previously, but like I think what helped me in the beginning of my recovery was the fact that I had nowhere else to go, right? I had to get plugged in here. I, I couldn't go back to the people that were getting high. I was right, running from that. Right. Yeah. And I think having that comfort of, well, I don't really have to get plugged in in Aberdeen. I got some Jersey people I'll call on the weekends <laughs> and be okay. Right. Like I think it really... It, it, it gets in the way of us make, and I'm not saying we have to get rid of it in order to push through it, but maybe just being aware that we don't want to rely just on that. We also want to push into this uncomfortability. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't push through. I didn't have the opportunity to go back to the meetings that I was from cause it was so far away and right. I didn't really build a new support group. So my, I didn't either. I just became self-centered more <laughs> you know I, I mean that's really what happened i i don't know declined deteriorated whatever you want to call it. I, I still did some other things i still tried to practice recovery principles i did get a lot more into meditation i did keep in touch with my sponsor somewhat but i definitely got very lax in going to meetings or working steps or or doing any of that actual work you mentioned getting plugged in in h and i and i was thinking something of a similar idea and actually Jason, who was on last week, talked about being of service and helping him to be accustomed to the area. And I think in moving, maybe one of the best things, if you've got some clean time already, is to be the GSR. Like nobody ever That's wants right. to be the goddamn GSR anyway, right? Like go to a group, join it, be the GSR, because you'll find that a lot of people at area have time and they're the same people that always show up to be of service and you can kind of get plugged in and in that way, I think. Yeah. So and one of the limitations, it's interesting. One of the limitations we had when we had moved was the work schedules we were on. We were doing a lot of night work, so I didn't have a bunch of nights to run around. But what is nice to be able to do if you can afford the luxury is to hit a bunch of different meetings in an area before you kind of make a general assessment of how terrible it is oh, like, yeah. Yeah. you know because you can hit certain meetings around here that'll be completely different than another meet you know the tuesday night meeting could be completely different than the wednesday night meeting or the friday night meeting absolutely and if you just make the opinion of the whole area on one or two meetings that you hit that could be rough so uh, up in this area they give out like a if you raise your hand in the meeting and say you're new to the area as a newcomer 
just want a phone book, whatever, they give you like this meeting schedule pamphlet and it's got everybody in the meetings number on it that put it on there. Well, the men's numbers for the men, women's numbers for the women. You think that's useful? I, I have never found that useful. So in the area where I got clean, you needed 90 days clean to write your name and phone number on that meeting list. <laughs> so I found that useful because it took me seven years to be able to sign that motherfucker. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> because I was, I never, it took me seven years to get 90 days. So from, from that perspective, um, it was something I always was striving to get to so that I could write my fucking name on that. And um, so, and do I find it useful? I've actually, um, when I used to get those meeting lists, when I was chronic relapse or I did call some people occasionally, um, I think it is useful because it at least gave me a listing of where the meetings were locally. And it did give me a list. A, a, so, and I, for me early on, I said, if I ever get a, a phone call, because I would call people and I wouldn't even ever, I'd leave messages and I wouldn't ever even get a phone call back. Mm -hmm. So I learned that I was never going to be that guy when I finally could sign that list. So I made it a point of my recovery that I return every phone call, right? It may not be that same day, but I returned every fucking phone call, right? Because I never wanted to be that guy that somebody was talking about. I called six people from that fucking list and six motherfuckers, none of them called me back. Right. <laughs> so, so for me, I didn't want to be that guy. And so, I mean, it's a valid question. Why do you write your name and phone number on there if you don't want to be called? Right. So, so for me, I think it is helpful. Um, and actually, I think it was helpful because I did, may have not have caught everybody's name, but if somebody shared and, I, and like, I didn't, I, I, I don't want to talk to everybody in the meeting today, right? right. But if, but if I heard both you guys, I would, like, I would talk to either one, I would call probably you guys, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I, I'd be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard Billy cross that <laughs> yeah, name off. That <laughs> but, you know, I'd her. be like, if I heard one of you guys sharing about something that I may be going through, I would absolutely reach out. So from that perspective, I think it's helpful. I got to be honest with your first point, the fact that it took seven years and three months to sign it, I would say it wasn't useful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that didn't can, work too well. Can't be coming back, man. Right. <laughs> well, and there's always the thing, like, so people have called me over the years and I don't necessarily know where they got my number from. Maybe they got it from the meeting list. Maybe they didn't. They don't necessarily tell you, I got your number off this meeting list. You know, they may just call. So, I mean, is it besides, you know, we go to meetings, don't pick up, pray, maybe announce yourself as new, whether that's to the area or not. Just know if you say new to the area, I'm judging you <laughs> in my head, never outwardly. Uh, is there other things like uh, is there just something that really you know get involved in service or I, I think all those same things we kind of tell the newer member but like is there maybe be more honest about where you're at like is that something that's useful like can i would it be helpful if i went into the meeting and said look i'm new to this area this is like the third week i've been here this is the fifth meeting i've been at and i fucking hate it and i really want some help <laughs> i, I want to be a part of so uh, so i did all those things right i really fucking hate it i did that for a long time it was probably five months so i don't know that that that, that type of honesty wasn't helpful right because it was just negative energy from me about how much i hated being here so uh, and i wasn't asking for help i didn't say I, i'm looking for some of you guys to plug into i was just fucking spewing how much i hated it here so i think it depends on what my motive is, motive would have been or would be in the future right so i try not to repeat mistakes so i i haven't grown in my recovery since when i first moved down here if i move again it's, i've learned what not to do i'm not going to go in there and just be insulting to a whole room full of fucking re people trying to recover right. because that's what i did I, I insulted the area that people love fucking maryland that are from maryland so do they uh, some uh, yeah, yeah they, you both got maryland fucking hats on yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> so i don't i don't have maryland hat on, but i loved new jersey right so my wife and i were just talking about it I like because we were like people that are from maryland seem to fucking love it right and um you know, I never saw Jersey State flags anywhere when I was in Jersey. We just got a pretty flag. It's not a love yeah. for the state. It's <laughs> just nice looking. <laughs> it sure does fly a lot. <laughs> Wherever the fuck I go, there's a Maryland fucking flag. Right. So, I, I, so I, I think I just need to check my motives and 
I'm, I need, I need people in recovery to help me stay clean. Right. That's my bottom line. That's my reality. So, um, and I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to go through the same things I went through when I moved here. Right. So I would just go in and I would insult a whole room full of people and the place that they loved. And, you know, people, when you do that, they, they could give a fuck about you. Well, and I think <laughs> you're giving a good model of like that middle path, right? Because you're saying I came down and insulted people in the area they were in. And, and I felt like I tried to ignore that I didn't like the recovery area I had moved to, right? I tried to just completely act like that feeling didn't exist and not acknowledge it. And, I, and I'm thinking, is there somewhere in that middle path of that, like, hey, look, I, I am feeling like not connected to this recovery area and it's hurting me and it's making me feel judgmental. I know that's all made up stories, right? I know you guys are the same loving people as you are in the area I came from, but I got to be honest that like, I, I'm, I'm hating it right now and I need y'all to help me to get plugged in like somewhere in that middle path where we acknowledge we do feel that because i don't think ignoring it helped me but also not being a dick or to just acknowledge the difference you know hey it's different here it's in what i'm used to it's uncomfortable you know <laughs> like I, I got clean in an area where we did stuff a certain way and things were a certain way and i was established and that's what i'm used to and now this is not that and it's hard i think it opened so having been here now with 10 years and seeing other people come to this area from outside of this area, I think I'm more empathetic for them. And when I hear them sharing that they're new and not from the area, I definitely try to reach out to them. I've, I've seen other people share similar things about coming to this area, right? Or it doesn't need to be this area, but just coming to a new area. And um, I think that you know, the longer I stay here and the more work I continue to do on myself, I'm more open to that and reach out. And, um, you know, not everybody is the same. I, and, uh, that's okay. Right. I'm not, I'm not going to connect with, a, with a lot of people. Right. And that's okay too. Right. So there's some people that you, they can walk into a room and they're friends with every motherfucker. <laughs> right. I'm not, right? I'm just, I'm like, I'm social anxiety. I like, I'm doing pretty good here today, but uh, like, you know, sometimes, and it's, you know, some, it's just like recovery. Some days I'm better at it than others. So some days I'm better at going up to that guy that just shared that he's new to the area. And other days I'm like, ah, fuck him. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. I got, I got, yeah. I got, I'm I got my just own shit going on hours today. I'm fucking tired. I'm going home. Right. right. So, I don't know. Is there some kind of prep work we could do? Like you talked about, you said you visited a meeting in South Carolina, but you didn't go in. No. So, you know, we, I haven't been to an in-person meeting since COVID and, um, although I've had my shots, I, it's, we just weren't really sure what's good and it's very different down there. So it uh, is, yeah, no masks just, anywhere. <laughs> right. So they, Nobody never, gives a right, shit. So, <laughs> so you're like, eh. so we didn't go in. Right. So that's just this Northeast corridor. Apparently everybody carried around here and I guess the other coast, but anywhere off of this coast, people <laughs> did, just didn't even care. And I will say, as far as homework, I know, and again, it's more my wife than me, but she's always like, look and see if the area has a, a hotline number or a phone. She has called the hotline number and said, hey, we're trying to find a meeting. Where's a meeting? And they'll tell you. Because meeting lists aren't always up to date. No online shit isn't always up to date. But usually if you call the hotline, that's a person that knows the area and they can typically tell you what meetings are there and, and just saying like, Hey, you know, what's a, what's a better meeting? What do you know? Anything about the meetings? I mean, most of the time they'll tell you, people tell you if you ask, if you don't ask, you don't fucking know. <laughs> That's funny to me. Cause I still, I'm like, no, you don't fucking call anybody. Fuck that. Right. So yeah. Right. <laughs> I've just established the best way to look it up online, which is don't use like the NA world services website. Right, the area. Don't use the, the, the area. state. Right, you go to the smallest possible area website you can, and that's usually the most accurate. But I, I'm like, call somebody. <laughs> I'd rather show up <laughs> right. at a meeting that doesn't exist. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's what I do too. And then get pissed off. Oh, this fucking area. Right. Their schedules they not can't even, even keep their up. <laughs> get mad. Another reason to hate them. <laughs> uh, is there anything else? Is there like a, a special way to reach out to? somebody can you try to pal around with people when you first get a place is there like a is there like a dating site for recovery network <laughs> people in the area <laughs> no i th i think th 
my biggest suggestion is don't be a dick, right? So I, I was a dick when I came when I moved down here, and it hurt me, right? So, um, you know, I, I tried. So that was that was um, and be more accepting and open and ask for some fucking help, right? So I mean, um, I think for me, it, it's it's all right to go in and share that I'm struggling because I I learned early on that anything that's affecting my recovery is this game game on for sharing in a, in a meeting right so that's how that's how i get through stuff is i continue to talk about it until i don't need to talk about it anymore and um and if that's because i moved to a new area well then i should do that so and and although i did that and when i first got here just constantly bashing the area and the and um the recovery and everything about it was not helpful <laughs> so it just wasn't and you know i i will will never do that again right so i learned right so that um no matter how i'm feeling it's still an inside job and it, for me it would have been okay to share about how much i'm struggling to keep it on me but i i just openly shared about the area and all kinds of shit that well, just made me look like a judgmental dick right, right. <laughs> and i think there's a point like for myself where it just allowing myself to feel uncomfortable needs to be okay like i want to tell myself like i tried to psych myself up when we go to these new areas you know because at that time i had i forget 15 16 17 years and i just thought oh i've been around na enough i fucking you know I'm trying to psych fine. myself out like i fucking belong here i earned my seat here you know they can't and all that shit and then i go in and i'm like oh this is really uncomfortable and awkward and instead of just trying to accept and own that i just let it overwhelm me and then i'm fucking running out the door as soon as the meeting's over right. you know and just recognizing like it's gonna be tough it's gonna be awkward it's gonna be a little off-putting at first but let me just try to kind of get through that phase and and accept it and, and i think something you just said jim really hits the nail on the head when we got here i felt like we were so desperate and so beat down and so clueless as to where to go next it was easy to ask for help right but then as we get more established again some of those old what we talked about societal male behaviors come back in about, you know, we don't need to stop for acid directions. We're good. Right. We'll figure this out. And, and I think that's where we got to be, man, that vulnerable state of like, Hey, I need help. I'm new in this area. I'm not feeling it. I need help. And, and if we can get there, we're probably in a pretty good place to make some connections and get plugged in. All right. I think we nailed it. So if you're moving in recovery, uh, we just fixed you. <laughs> yeah. I have no clue. Uh, good luck to you. It's a, it's it's a tough one, right? Yeah. It's definitely a tough one. Just try as best you can to, you know, make yourself vulnerable and ask for help and, and do what you can to get plugged in. Uh, everybody take it easy. We'll see you next week. Did you like this episode? Share it with people you think might get something out of it. Check out the rest of our episodes at recoverysortof.com. Also, while you're there, you can find ways to link up with us on Facebook, Twitter, instagram reddit youtube anything we're always looking for new ideas got an idea you want us to look into reach out to us <laughs>